Good afternoon. Welcome again to my daily Facebook Live. If you haven't seen me before, I was here to my daily broadcast. It will end up on YouTube, so I shouldn't really call it Facebook Live. <laughs> but that's where it starts. All right, let's get back on track, shall we? Welcome to my daily broadcast. My name is Barry Sully, and I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion of the divine feminine. Again, this got the intro out of the way. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do these daily Facebook Lives called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. This is a daily broadcast I mentioned, and today's number 345, almost the 350 mark, We're getting there. And today's topic actually was a blending of two ideas, which is about promises, broken promises, and ghosting. Yes, that dreaded term. So I'll explain what that means in a moment in case you don't know what that means. And also, I have this sort of sense that really, in a way, ghosting is breaking an unspoken promise. So let's get into this, shall we? Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, um, as a little description, yes, I've called them messages from the masculine to inspire the feminine heart. But these are also angles, perspectives, topics, themes around the area of love and relationships, masculine and feminine polarity, living in our truth, authentic expression, um, living in your purpose, making a difference, lots of different stuff like that. So... I appreciate all the thumbs up and the love and stuff that comes in. Any questions, comments, you can please post them in the comments below. If it's during the broadcast, I'll respond to them as, as I can in the broadcast. And if it's afterwards, I'll get back to them in the comments myself. Cool? Let's get into this. So again, title is Ghosting, Breaking an Unspoken Promise. So what do I mean by that? Let's show you talk. Let's talk. First of all, let's break down what the term ghosting is. Ghosting is the very simple act, but painful act usually, of someone disappearing. So, for example, if you're a woman in this, watching this, this will make sense to you. And if you're a man, listen up. So you're in a relationship, and ghosting seems to be usually focused towards men disappearing, not women disappearing. But it might. I, I'm going to presume, I could be wrong, but I may presume there's going to be a proportion of women who disappear as much as there are men that disappear. So ghosting is an um, indiscriminate act from either gender. It's not like one gender towards the other. So what ghosting is is the vanishing act, simply put. Um, it's a more, ghosting is a more recent term, but I think this term, this, this experience has been around for a long time. I remember the idea of the vanishing act from many years ago. Basically, it means you're in a relationship with somebody or you're dating somebody or you need to know somebody, and suddenly, after being in communication for a period of time, the other person just vanishes from sight. You don't hear from them, you don't see them, you don't know what's going on, you reach out to them, nothing comes back. That's really what ghosting is. They basically become a ghost. They disappear on you, the vanishing act. The problem with this, and there are several, but the biggest problem with this, disappearing acts of the slow fade. Actually, Lily, I would say, and thank you for the question by the comment, it isn't a slow fade. Ghosting is a vanishing act. It's like disappearing. The slow fade is something else, I would say. It's more, that's more in the sense of somebody who is pulling back, but you'll know it's going on. The ghosting is where they vanish. Like you, you're totally taken by surprise, no expectation. So it's more the disappearing act than the slow fade. So that's my um, perspective on it. Justina, uh, slow fade and Houdini. Uh, also benching and all those other terms. These are terms I didn't know about. So Houdini, that's an escape act. That's a different, I think it's well different. But the slow fade, I thought, and maybe I'm wrong, I thought the slow fade was basically where someone's like, calling their jets or just the, um, the hot and heavy became lukewarm. And it sort of fell apart. That's, that to me is different from ghosting. Ghosting is like, done, gone, out of it. So, um, yeah, benching I've heard is something else. So anyway, so let me talk about ghosting first, because it's taking me off topic, ladies. And I appreciate the input. But, <laughs> but I want to stay on track with where I'm going with this. I talk, As the title said, it's about an unspoken, broken promise. And I'm going to get into promises in a moment, too. But, but ghosting, in the sense I'm using it and expressing it, I believe. And thanks for all the input, by the way, again is this, uh, this sense of you had an unspoken promise with this person. You're connected, you're enjoying, exploring, building a relationship, and this person suddenly disappears, meaning that the promise they had said to you that was unspoken, it's an unspoken promise, was that you're going to continue the journey together. And when they disappear, that's breaking that promise. And it's, yes, it can be gut-wrenching, heart-rending, upsetting, distressing, and painful, and I'm going to be careful. I'm, I'm watching how I'm treading this gently because it could be a painful for some people. I know this has become a painful experience. But, and the reality is that that disappearing act 
is often, uh, we weren't going to go approach this one. Part of this is, is fear-based, meaning that for somebody who ghosts somebody else, they're afraid to stay connected. They may be afraid of intimacy. They may be afraid of something else. I'm not saying, they have, I'm not saying have pity on them. I'm not saying that at all. But what's driving their, their reaction to ghosts is they don't have the balls, the chutzpah, the willingness, <clears throat> the comfort level, or the vulnerability to be connected. And so they get scared to go further and they back away. But they don't just back away saying, I can't handle this and I'm leaving, or some other way of saying it. They just vanish because they're simply afraid of telling the truth. So for me, ghosting is a coward's act. It's a coward's way out. Simply as that. But the promise that is on the receiving, if you're on the receiving end of the ghosting, this is where the promise piece comes in. Because you, if you were ghosted, sorry, just you know, usually there is no spoken promise or any commitment talk, intimacy or vulnerability to communicate. Well, this is my point. It's an unspoken promise. So yes, I agree with you. It is not a spoken promise. But it is a cowardly act. Yes. Now, here's the thing. If you're on the receiving end of being ghosted, this is where the unspoken promise comes in. Because if you're in a building, growing, intimate connection with somebody in relationship, and I'm using somebody versus man or woman, because I believe does, ghosting does work both ways, as in both men and women ghost each other. Um, <laughs> actually, this crazy visual of two people ghost trying to see who can ghost the other one first. But that's totally off topic. So let me stay, let me stay on top of this one. So if you're on the receiving end of somebody ghosting you, What's happening is there's this unspoken, as I said, unspoken promise that they have defaulted on with you. And so you feel like you've been, um, you basically had a broken promise. You, you've had, your, had a promise of possibility with, you, with this other person yanked away from you. So it feels like you've had a broken promise. Now, it feels a lot more than that for a lot of people because you've got to be a lot more invested emotionally. And to be honest, some people ghost because they're afraid of how much the other person's coming on to them, energetically, emotionally, whatever that is. So if you're getting... Oh, okay, yeah, I'm going to say this one. Bear with me. If you've been ghosted by different partners regularly, it may be something for you to look at. I talked about this in previous videos a couple of days ago, to you about red flags, about this understanding that if the same experience happens several times, 90% of the time it's not about them, it's about you. So if you've been ghosted several times by different people... That could be something to look at for yourself. Now, if it happens just the once, then nine times at ninety percent of the time, it's them, not you. So let's be clear. I'm not saying it's always you, but if you're getting ghosted frequently, maybe you are coming on too strong, or you're doing something that is blocking your chance to have true romance and true relationship. Just this, just to keep you an eye on that one. Um, just you know, you're saying a fear of a fear of getting hurt, so they leave before they can get too involved. Right, exactly. That's what I said earlier. Is, is that they. The person who ghosts quite often is afraid of getting closer because they don't want to get hurt. They don't have to be intimacy. They might feel more um, inability to trust you because they don't trust themselves. So the ghoster versus the ghostee is back is cutting and cutting and running because they're scared. So that because they're not willing to commit. Now they may not admit to being scared. They may go, oh, "I don't need that. I'm walking away." Bullshit. To be to be blunt. They're ghosting because they're afraid of connection, afraid of intimacy, afraid of connected depth. Absolutely, yes. So they don't want to get, and they don't want to get left. Yes, they want to leave before they get left. Yeah, exactly. So again, if you're the recipient of ghosting, if you're the ghostee, making up terms that go along, this is really where the pain is, truthfully, because if you've been ghosted by somebody, okay, that's an option. I go there. Hold on, hold on. Just I'm getting downloads. So, okay, so if you're the ghostee. It can be painful, as I said. Now, here's a piece of it that you can look at. If somebody ghosts you, and again, it's an infre if it's not a frequent thing, if it's a frequent thing you're getting ghosted, again, time to look at yourself. If it's an infrequent thing where somebody ghosts you, I would count your blessings. Because if somebody ghosts you, based on the fact that, as I said, they're the ones afraid and not willing to commit and they can't even get close to you or they don't even know how to be intimate, you may have dodged a bullet. Sorry, you may have dodged a bullet by being ghosted in a way as much as it's painful because somehow you got this violation of like they didn't show up they didn't communicate they just dropped off the planet it's kind of like you should be thankful yeah i saw the smiley face go across there yeah exactly the truth in this challenge for people is they think somehow it's their fault and it's like no don't go there <clears throat> however as i said 
if you are somebody who has been ghosted many times, you might want to look at that and see maybe it's something happening for you where you're maybe going on too strong or you're doing something that's threatening to them, whatever it is. Lily, nice one. Rejection is God's protection. Um, yes, that's a good one. Rejection is God's protection. That's an interesting way of putting it. But again, if it's happening multiple times, that's an opportunity for feedback. If you're getting rejected multiple times, you might want to look into that. The thing I've become clear about in my journey, in my life, in my work, and I say for you, you would want to do the same thing too, if the repeated, if a pattern repeats itself several times with different partners, whether it's ghosting or rejection or something else, it's likely that the fix, the change, the um, resolution is something that happens inside of you, not them. So you may be going, I'm fine, I'm fine, because they're rejecting me. Maybe it's something in you you want to look at. So in the area of ghosting, again, same thing is true. If you've been ghosted on, by different people, like every single time you go at somebody new, um, actually, Ellen, I appreciate the invitation to jump in there, Ellen. <laughs> actually, why not? Let's see what happens. Um, let's see if I can get you in. Ellen. Okay, let's see. Let's see what, uh, hang on a second, this may become a new thing. Bringing something into the broadcast. Nope, didn't happen. Okay, continuing then. <laughs> Maybe hit the wrong button there, Ellen. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I appreciate you being here. Okay, so continuing in the topic. So I'm giving you two pieces here. If it's a one-off thing that happens to you, that is, yeah, I wasn't sure that was going on, so <laughs> thank you for the laughter. So in the sense of rejection um, or in terms of ghosting, if it's a one-time thing, then it's likely to be them. If it's a multiple things happening to you, the odds are likely it's something to do with you. So just be aware that it's not just always one way. There's, t there's a definite skills here. And I want to touch on promises for a moment because that just came up as well. That promise is interesting that we do that. We have a bad habit. Well, we have a habit. Let me say, not say bad initially. Um, Justine, what was that? Sorry. Could it be if the one on the receiving end of the ghosting is unavailable as well? So they chose that person to get entangled with. Um, I think it depends, to be honest. So could it be that the one on the receiving end is the one of the ghosting is unavailable? The thing about this is, if there are two people connecting in a relationship and one is unavailable, the person who wants to be with that person who's finding that the other one's being unavailable, they're going to probably tell them that before they walk away. It's unlikely if one person's available that the, um, the first person is going to ghost them. Somebody who, somebody who ghosts somebody is the one that's usually unavailable, not the one that's being ghosted. 99% of the time. So I don't think in response to that question, that's actually true. So for you to think about. So maybe back to the promises piece. We as humans have a habit of presuming a whole bunch of stuff, a whole list of things with our future partners. And these are promises that they didn't write. They didn't create. They didn't commit to. So until you get verbal or written or actual promises from the other person to you, don't presume a damn thing. <laughs> so... That's what I mean. This whole thing about ghosting being some spoken promise. There's this, this rule that we have that when we meet somebody, they should get to know us, we should get to know them, and we should communicate. Unfortunately, not everybody got the memo. And a lot of people out there don't have the understanding that when you want to stop communication, you say that you're going to stop communication versus just disappearing. So I just want to make sure you get this. The ghosting can be a powerful lesson, a gift, and a relief in some ways as well. So if you've been ghosted, as I said, it could be a blessing in disguise because the person who's ghosted you doesn't have the willingness or the comfort or the ability to be open with you, in which case you dodged a bullet. So ghosting can be a gift. That's another piece I can put in there. But the thing about it is this, this journey of relationship, there's always, and I guess this is an overarching piece I'm giving you right now, in relationships, they're always teaching you something. If you don't watch for the lessons, the opportunities, the growth, the um, education that happens in relationships, you're missing the biggest piece of the pie in some ways. Relationships can be fun, absolutely. Intimacy, pleasure, sex, all these different things are great. However, 90, there's like the, it's in a way it's like the iceberg. These are really the analogies that drop in as they do. So on the surface, above the surface, is this little bit which is the, the fun, the playfulness, the connection, the physical touch, all the intimacy stuff. Below the surface is, is all the connection of the energies of subconscious connections, um, lessons, opportunities, growth, 
change, transformation that a lot of people miss. So if you want a healthy relationship, look below the surface. <laughs> That's where the joy is. And that's actually where some of the best things can happen are. And actually what happens, by the way, if you do dive into the deeper stuff, all the other stuff above the surface, the intimacy, all the other things, gets magnified, increased, and blossoms. So that's an opportunity available for you in a relationship. But of course, you want to be with somebody who gets that with you. So neither one of you ghost each other. <laughs> okay, I think that's that topic. It's covered the topic nicely, at least for the, for the uh, benefit of this talk. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day. This is number 345 in my daily Facebook Live broadcast list. Um, these are also up on YouTube. And if you haven't seen them before, you can find all of them on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author, as well as on my business, sorry, on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby's The Playlist and Messages from the Masculine is the um, playlist. Channel playlist, yeah. If you're stuck in this area, you want some help in the area of love and relationships, if this is starting to hit you and you're going, I need to get some help, I do offer a, a gift every time, which is my complimentary clarity conversation. Um, you want to call, hang on, sidetrack. So I want to call the ghoster out, but what's going to what? What's that going to do, right? That's the point. Calling out the ghoster, first of all, if they disappear, how are you going to call them anyway? How are you going to get them out? The bottom line is, if somebody ghosts you again, 90% of the time, it's because they're not willing to commit. Their fear, their stuff. Don't go chasing it. No point. It doesn't serve you. It may serve, it may serve some part of you thinking you're better than them, but where's the benefit of that? If you want real love, move on to somebody who doesn't ghost you. That kind of straight forward again. But if you've been ghosted multiple times by different people, it's something to look at for yourself. Speaking of which, if, <laughs> if you're in the area of relationship, if you're stuck in the area of love and relationships, I do offer as my gift a complimentary clarity conversation. It's my third, it's a 30 minute discovery session. My gift to you where it can help you get some guidance and clarity. And if my skills can support you and you want to work together, we can do that too. To get that free gift, which is my time, not free to me, but free to you, you go to my website, which is barryselby.com and either go forward slash chat or you can click on the let's chat um, menu choice and sign up for it there. Again, these broadcasts are available on my business page on Facebook as well as on my YouTube channel. If you have questions or comments that you want to watch in the replay, I'll respond to the comments afterwards. And for those who watched, sorry, those who commented during this broadcast, I appreciate it. I could answer some of your questions and thanks for watching. Um, this is my daily broadcast, so we'll do this again tomorrow. Something else, I'm not sure what it'll be. If you didn't see my last week's broadcast, by the way, I did a whole six, seven broadcasts on red flags. They were called Red Flag Advisories. So I invite you to look at those if you haven't seen them because there's some pretty good content in there too. I hope this has been a benefit to you. I trust that there's some lessons in here for you as well. And uh, with that, it's a Saturday, so no homework today. If you haven't seen my broadcast, I do give homework most times. This one just is standalone. Okay, there's one homework. <laughs> Didn't expect it, but it came through. If you are not sure about this whole thing of ghosting, look back at your past relationship dating experiences. If you had that happen a lot, time to look at yourself. So, so Justina was saying, yes, I know. You're telling yourself to go where the love and openness is. Yes. So homework. Look at, look at your past relationships and dates especially. And if there's a lot of ghosting going on, it may be you, not them. If it's only a one-time thing and you're still judging that or feeling upset about it, let it go. It's not yours to worry about. hope this has helped you. Um, again, if any questions, reach out. If you want help in the area of love and relationships, sign up for a conversation with me, and I'll be back in tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all your input, and thanks, Justine, for a lot of your input. I appreciate that, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.